Is it still fun? It has its moments. It has good times and bad times. There are days I want to, you know, wring my hair out, especially with some of these crazies that they send me. I don't think my real clients are as bad as the ones that Bravo sends me. That's for sure. Now, what's the biggest train wreck? No names, please. Um, oh, come on, name them. <laughs> oh, God, I could never name them. There's just too many. I mean, you know, they're, the Brits are a pain in the ass. Can I say that? They are. They're a pain in the ass. They know everything. You can't teach them anything. So and all the much, British ones have been a pain. And, and how much of a learning curve do you find? Do somebody, do some of the people actually listen and, and, and yes, we've had marriages um, in our real club. We've had like a 99% success rate. We've had engagements like last year when they got engaged in season five. He went on Facebook. His Facebook blew up. He cheated on her. What can I do about that? You get famous in Hollywood and you get like all these people throwing themselves at, at each other that there's nowhere to go. So I've had really close calls on the love match. you got to remember, we're not The Bachelor. We don't live with the people for six weeks. They get one date for three hours. That's about as much as they get. You mentioned so. your clients as opposed to the ones yeah. they send you. Mm -hmm. uh, how much input do you have into what they send you? Have you, have you no, had I don't have any input at all. Have any. You, I'm, I, the moment you see me see them is the moment I see them. And what is their vetting process like? Um, their vetting process is really strict. I mean, it's NBC. You know what NBC is like. Okay, so there's a strict process. they got to go through hoops, major hoops. Yeah. But still. Well, I mean, we have to make TV. <laughs> we want to entertain you. We don't want you to fall asleep. If I gave you some billionaire from the Forbes list and he could, you know, barely talk and, you know, was grumpy, you wouldn't watch the show. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I trust me, you wouldn't watch the show, the ones I'm thinking of. What's been, what's what's been most tough for you lately these days? What? What's been most tough for you lately these days as far as um, business Being goes? single was the toughest. Um, being single and being scrutinized for it, being an expert. So it's like the cobbler with no shoes. This season on Millionaire Matchmaker, I do go online. I do use my book, which I have never used, Become Your Own Matchmaker. And I find true love myself. So it was like for years I was criticized for that. How emotionally taxing is that for you? Um, it wasn't emotionally taxing. I've never shown my personal life on camera. Last season was the first time, and this will be the next time. where It grows. It's getting better for me. I was nervous to do that. I wasn't like the housewives and Bethany and Nene and all them. I couldn't do that right away because I have a reputation as an expert. So if you saw me fail, you wouldn't come to my business, right? So I didn't want to do that. But now I feel like it's the only way. You have to show both sides of the coin. And, and the American public is pretty educated. They pretty can decipher, you know, the real me and the expert me. So How has the real you changed since the first season? Oh, um... I think I've gotten easier. According to the notes last season on season six, my producers, as well as um, our vice president, said that I wasn't mean enough. So maybe I've lost my meanness? I don't know. Hmm. You'll have to tell me this season after you watch. They said I was softer. Maybe love made me softer. I don't know. You, you, seem, to be, no, you seem to be softer in this situation, which is why I'm asking. Okay. Well, yeah. I think I've, I, you know, I'm not as angry. Maybe that's what it is. You maybe know? you need to go back to Jeffrey Lewis's first season, Angry. Oh, he, well, I'm not, I'm, I have OCD in little things, like I have a photographic memory when I lose something, but I'm not OCD, like, clean like he is. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not dirty, but I definitely have clothes on the floor in my house. Let's put it that way. Do you feel yeah. that your, um, this show has educated people on what a matchmaker does? Do you yes. feel like the perception changed? Yes. Um, for, we used to be told that, you know, our business was for the dateless and the desperate. It is no longer. Uh, Jenny McCarthy and Ricky Lake were the ones who actually convinced me to go online and date, even though they didn't meet their loves online, they had good experiences. Uh, I see a lot of celebrities online, believe it or not. Uh, the other thing is is that Match.com makes $450 million a year. They must be doing something right. And the average age is over 40. So as we age and we get older and we live longer and we have two, three divorce, divorces, we have a place to go now, which we never had before. It was the neighborhood bar. And most people don't you know, drink heavily like that or they're tired at the end of the day. What do you think about the, the, uh, the proliferation of dating services that have come up. I saw one the other day advertised on TV for farmers. Yes, I saw that. I saw that. I thought that was great. We need niche dating sites. We need the sites that say, I'm vegan. I love dogs. You know, I'm a horsewoman. You know, things like that. You need things like that. Um, because that, the commonality of an interest is the glue, not the sex when you're dating. I want to know what you're looking for. What type do you like? I like rugged, tall, athletic, um, real men. Yeah. 
Oh, any certain have. any certain ages? Um, no, I just go for like my boyfriend's eight years younger than me. Rich. Rich would be great. I haven't gotten that yet. So, who knows if this one lasts? We'll see. We're living together. I just got a promise ring, so that's good. We're, I'm going slow on this one. Does that does that um, when you when someone comes in if they give you a huge list of characters mm -hmm. that they're looking for is that better or worse? It, it, they all do it, so it's standard. That's standard operating procedure. Everyone has a laundry list down to the floor, and then I have to weed and knock the ones that are off that are not important and say, let's narrow cast, let's focus in. What's really important? Okay, the plane is hitting the building. What are you going to remember as your last thought when you fall in love? And most people then go, okay, I don't need this. I don't need the house. I don't need the car. I don't need all this stuff. I need to figure out that it's just like this, what's inside that matters. Your heart is the most important thing anyway. So is that why most people, these people need to come to you is because their, their criteria is just way too Well, high? they're physically driven, male or female. So it starts with physicality, and you can never take that out of the equation, especially when it comes to men. It's all about the eyes, and women fall in love between their ears. We can look at something, but if he doesn't say what we want, we're out, you know, unless you're doormat. And is it really all about a sense of humor? It can be. You can actually laugh a woman into bed and not be fun and not be as handsome as the uh, as the Brad Pitt type. Like I once said to Jimmy Kimmel on the air, I said, "You know what? You are sexy funny." And he, he goes, and he had just broken up with Sarah Silverman, and I said, "You are sexy funny, and I see why girls want you." And he was shocked that I said that, but it was true. He had that X factor that I could see me dating him. You know, what I mean, that was the kind of thing. Yet you wouldn't think of him as your top ten people you'd go to when you. You know, go to sleep at night and you want to dream about a guy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, but he's very witty and very sharp. And that is is empowering to a woman. Makes you feel good, protected, safe. Is that something, the, the Facebook experience you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. where the guy kind of blew yeah, up he, from Yeah, and, and that happens a lot. Right. Is that something now going forward you're going to kind of try to coach people on? About well, I have a rule, only give them your first name, give them your last name, because if you give them the last name, then they can Facebook you. And don't spell it out for them. You know, if you have a weird spelling in your name. I, the, the whole thing about looking at all the other pictures and seeing their past loves and hearing what their friends is detrimental to the dating experience. It can kill it in six seconds because there's no mystery. Mystery is what dating is all about, that little wiggle room, the magic that you can't always get. You but a certain mean? amount of due diligence is important. Yeah, no, I'm not talking about, like, is he have a good job? Does he have credit? You know, is he nice to his mother? I'm not talking about that. So I'm talking about the other side, where you want to fall in love, you want magic. And if you know too much, it'll kill it. Is there one kernel that's the criteria for a good mate? Best friend with sex. Can't be best friend without sex. Best friend that you can lean on and has your back. Mm -hmm. Support system. Because when everything fails, you've got to know that that person's going to be there in your corner. Thanks, Beth. Well, no problem. We're out of time. Thank you. Thank you very much.